Okay, guys. So, um, <clears throat> what I would like to do now is uh, I want to derive a result uh, for two reasons. It will give us some practice using Biosava, but we're going to need this because um, next week, Monday, we're going to talk about how do permanent magnets work. And we're going to try to do a few calculations. We'll have a little magnet with us. We'll try to do a few calculations to see, can we really understand how a permanent magnet works? To do those calculations, we're going to need the result that we're going to derive now. So we're doing this for two reasons. To learn how to use Biosava, and because we'll use this for the permanent magnet. What I'm going to do is I'm going to write down the problem that we need to solve. And I want you guys to we'll solve it together. Okay. So let me show you what the problem is first of all. That's y, that's x. Let's put here some loop. There is our loop. So my, my picture might not be very good, but there's the loop in the xy plane. Okay, so it's just a circular loop. It's got some radius r. So this is a circle, not an ellipse. It's got some radius r. And I would like to know what is the field at some point on the z-axis. I want to know what is the magnetic field B over here. So what we're going to need to do is apply the of R. We're going to need to calculate this quantity. I cross R hat dl. And I will tell you that inside this loop, there is a current flowing. That current is I. <clears throat> so, first of all, last time uh, that we discussed, uh, or last time we did a calculation, we said we should never start calculating unless we know what the answer is. Otherwise, how do you know if you're right? Do we know something about the answer? So, usually we can tell something by symmetry. What symmetries are there here? Cylindrical. So in other words, if here is our loop of wire sitting here, okay, so I said to you guys, let's calculate the field down there, and then I say, close your eyes, and while your eyes are closed, I turn the piece of wire, and I say, open your, wire, your eyes. You can't tell that I turned that piece of wire. Does everyone agree? Good. So can you tell me, based on that, can you tell me anything about the magnetic field? Very good. Takong, why do you say that? Because uh, it will be invariant. So this point on the axis doesn't change when I do the rotation. It's the same point. So I say to you, close your eyes and let's say the field pointed like this. Then while your eyes are closed, I turn it and I say, open your eyes. Well, you could tell that a rotation was done because it used to point like this, now it points like that. But we said, you can't tell if a rotation is done. So this couldn't be the direction of the magnetic field line. The field line has to point like that so that when we do the rotation, you open your eyes, you can't tell I rotated. Okay? So the field has to point parallel to the z-axis. Is everyone happy with that? Just by symmetry. We haven't calculated anything. We already know that the field line has to point like that because that's the only way it could be invariant under this rotation. Good. So it must be along this axis. Okay, good. Okay, now, what should we do? Can you guys tell me? Elements at the, any single, single elements on the wire, and we consider 
going to be like uh, to be discrete in P order of one C. So we'll take that little element there. That's got length dl. Good. So the dl here will be the dl there. Good. Then we have From here to there. Good. So let's put that vector in. Let's call that maybe R. It's R hat that we want. So we're going to have a DB. Good. So that will be DB, right? That integrand. When we do this integral, guys, what should we turn this into an integral over? So we do want to integrate over L, but is there a natural coordinate to use? What reflects the symmetry? Theta. Because you've got a rotational symmetry, right? So it makes sense to write things in terms of? Theta. And let's use theta as a coordinate. And then we will integrate theta from 0 to, to pi. When you're writing in terms of theta, you should expect your answer to become simpler because you're using the coordinates that reflect the symmetry. Okay? So can you see we are again using the symmetry in the back of our minds? Okay? Good. So let's call this theta. In terms of theta, how shall I write dl? R d theta. So dl will be the radius of the hoop of the loop times d theta. How am I going to integrate theta from 0 to 2 pi? Good. So we still need to get hold of i as a vector and r hat as a vector. Good. So which R shall we write in terms? This here? Good. William, that's a good suggestion. I'm going to make one um, comment, which is the following. It's easiest to study this vector. Let's call this vector maybe uh, R, because that lives on the circle, right? And we know easily how to write down that vector. And in terms of uh, this vector. So let's imagine that this point here, where we want to calculate B, has got coordinates. What's the x coordinate? Zero. Zero. Y? Zero. Z? Zero. Good. So what's the blue vector? Z, Z hat. Good. That's the blue vector. What is the purple vector? Okay, x, x hat plus y, y hat, good. Now I want it in terms of r and theta. What's x in terms of r and theta? Good. r, cosine theta, x hat, that's x, x hat, plus r, sine theta, y hat, y, y hat, good. Now what is r, little r, okay? Z 
z minus r, r minus r, 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 minus r, r, theta. Good. So z, z hat minus r cos theta x hat minus r sine theta y hat. Why? Because there's minus r plus blue vector is the vector we want. Very good. Okay? Everyone happy with that? Any questions? Good. So, okay, I want one more vector, which is, can you see this purple, by the way? Okay, good. What is I? The current. Okay, now here's a trick. It's in the xy plane, good. And you know it must be perpendicular to the r vector. Because there's r, uh, which is radial, and i is tangent. Everyone happy with that? So there's the hoop, the current is tangent to the hoop, and the radial vector is, you know, in the radial direction of the hoop. Ah, so you know what, we'll just write it down. Because you see, if you've got cos theta x hat and sine theta y hat, to get a vector that's orthogonal, you can take, for example, sine theta x hat minus cos theta y hat. So it's very easy to guess what's the vector for the current. Okay? Um, so I will be, we will have sine theta uh, x hat, cos theta y hat, there will be the current I, and now let's just get the sign right. When theta is zero, in which direction should it point? So when theta is zero, when that angle is north, the current is going straight up. So which direction is that? Y hat. So when theta is naught, I want it to be y hat. So that must be plus, that must be minus. Okay? Anyone that would like me to explain exactly how I got that? Okay, so, do you agree that R and I are orthogonal? Okay, good. So, I want to look at that hoop. Okay, so I'm going to imagine I'm looking down the z-axis now. That's what the loop looks like. Do you agree that's R? Yes. Do you agree that's I? Yes. Orthogonal. Mm. This one is radial, that one's tangent. Happy? R, we said, don't worry about the number, the capital R. We said this should be like the x, which is like cos theta x hat, plus, and the other vector we said should be like sine theta y hat. Okay? To get a vector that's orthogonal, I know that i must be like minus sine theta x hat, plus cos theta y hat. Why? When I take the dot product, cos sine with a minus, cos sine with a plus. So I know that those two will sum to zero. So immediately, if I've got this vector and I want to write one that's orthogonal, swap the two components and put in a minus sign. The only thing I didn't know is where should I put the sign. And I figured out where to put the sign by asking which way does the current flow when theta is naught? Okay. Anyone else have a question? Okay, dokes. So now let's uh, work out uh, what does this look like. Okay. 
Is everybody happy if I do this? Good. So let's see what we get for B now. Uh, so we want I cross R. I cross R equals to, there's I, I minus sine theta x hat plus cos theta y hat cross, now let's put an R, uh, there was R, Z, Z hat minus R cos theta x hat minus R sine theta y hat. So let's work out the cross product now. What is x hat cross z hat? x hat cross z hat. How do you know there's a minus? How does the alphabet go? Okay? So it all, it's the same rule. You just follow the alphabet. So there's a minus. So good. So let's keep the i here. So we've got the minus from that. We'll cancel with the minus from that. And we'll get a z sine theta y hat. Watch me guys, I might be giving you a test on the board, not a quiz. What is x hat cross x hat? Perfect. x hat cross y hat? Z hat. So this term is going to be a z hat. Minus times minus plus r sine theta times sine theta plus so I think that's the first term now y hat cross z hat x hat y z that's like the alphabet uh, x hat uh, z cos theta y hat cross x hat minus z hat so we're going to get a minus uh, good little test cos uh, which term? Oh, cos theta times cos theta is cos squared theta with the z hat and in the last term, y hat cross y hat, zero. So let's just put this together. Um, well, that we can't do anything with z sine theta y hat. Uh, we can't do anything with this plus uh, z cos theta x hat. But now sine squared plus cos squared is one plus r z hat. Good. So this is i cross r. What is the mod of r? <coughs> Good. Perfect. So now we've got everything to plug into our formula for b. So b equals to, we'll have an integral, 1 over 4 pi r cubed. Well, there's r, so it's z squared plus r squared to the 3 over 2. 
Oh, good. Uh, mu naught, yes. Then we've got I cross R, which we just calculated. So that's I, Z, sine theta, Y hat, plus Z, cos theta, X hat, plus R, Z hat. And then we've got DL, which we said is R D theta. R D theta. Good. Oh no, we must have made a mistake, guys. We said that the magnetic field should point in the Z hat direction. But look, there's an X hat component and a Y hat component. But, Lucky, yes. They will integrate to zero. We're integrating from zero to two pi, and the integral of sine theta from zero to two pi is zero. Same amount of area above and below the curve, and for cos theta also zero. So actually, great. That integrates to zero. We don't need to worry about it. That integrates to zero. We don't need to worry about it. So what's the only term that survives? Z hat. That makes sense. Okay. So what do we get? Well, we get mu naught i. We have r times r. This is r squared. We have 2 pi. Let me put 2 and pi. And then we have over 4 pi z squared plus r squared to the 3 over 2 and uh, z hat. That's the magnetic field from this current carrying loop as calculated using the of survival. So let's just keep that answer and uh, I want to think a little bit about um, So I'm just going to rewrite that answer as follows. to study the situation that I go very far away from that loop. Well, is there any reason why we are between the two bar and the four bar? Sorry, is there any reason why? Yeah, so that's a good thing now. Why we haven't cancelled them? Is that what you're asking, William? Yeah. Yes, there is a reason. So I want to keep them separate and you'll see why in a moment. Now, I want to walk very, very far on this axis, far from that loop. What does it mean to be far from the loop? If that appears like a point, absolutely. So what am I comparing? R and Z. I can't say Z is big. I must talk about either comparing two lengths or talking about something that doesn't have dimensions. So I must say Z divided by R is very much bigger than 1 or Z is very much bigger than R. 
So I want to study Z very much bigger than R. In the limit where Z is very, very much bigger than R, R squared plus Z squared can be replaced by? Okay, good. This whole denominator can be reproduced by z cubed. So in this limit, what we get is b looks like mu naught times by 2 mu over 4 pi z cubed. Have we seen a field falling off like z cubed before? Yeah. Oh, okay. So where this is what mu is. Okay, so mu is equal to pi r squared i times by z hat. Okay? Have we seen a field that falls off like 1 over r cubed? The electric field of what? A dipole. And in fact, the electric field for the dipole looked like this. So E dipole was equal to 2P over 4 pi epsilon naught Z cubed. What was P called? Electric dipole moment. Mu is the magnetic dipole moment. Now, let me tell you why we did this. If you have a metal, okay, uh, so there are no magnetic monopoles. And the same way that you can get positive charges and negative charges, you don't get that for monopoles. So you don't get a, a north pole without a south pole. North pole always comes with the south pole. So you might wonder, how can you have a permanent magnet? How does that exist? Well, we're going to make a model for a permanent magnet, which is the following. We said always it's the outermost electron that does everything, right? So here's the atom. That outermost electron, when it's traveling around the atom, looks like a circular loop. Just like this problem. Okay? So each, this is now a, a, the field of a dipole. Each of those atoms inside this material will behave like a little dipole. And to work out the dipole moment of each atom, what are we going to need? Pi r squared is the area of that loop. So we'll need the area of the atom. And we'll need to multiply that by the current. So the electron will be whizzing around the atom. We'll have to calculate what current it carries. But once we've calculated the current that the electron carries, and we multiply by the area of that loop, we'll be able to calculate the magnetic moment of each atom. Then we'll add all of those magnetic moments up and see, does this explain the magnetism that we see in a permanent magnet? And that'll explain how, how you have permanent magnets. Okay? The direction of Z hat is by a right-hand rule. So take a look at the current in the hoop. If I curl my fingers the way the current flows in the hoop, which way does my thumb point? in that direction. So that's how we get the direction of the magnetic moment in this case. Okay? So that was an application of Biosavar. Any questions on, on how we applied Biosavar? Okay, good.